Sherry Candle, the U.S. Coast Guard. Jim Cox, United States Navy. I'm Tom Oldages, United States Army. Good morning, I'm Ben Lanik, uh, father of Cameron and Grayson, and I serve in the United States Coast Guard. Good morning, Brett Lauder, I was in the United States Marine Corps. Justin Smalling, Air Force. Robert Runyon, Marine Corps. Matt Kramer, U.S. Army. Paul Kramer, U.S. Army. Hi, Ed Brigham, U.S. Army Infantry. Jack Radebaker, Air Force. David Hanks, United States Air Force. Gary Bradford, U.S. Army. Scott Argo, U.S. Army. Hi, <coughs> at this time I'd like for us to everybody please stand.
like to welcome my fourth and fifth grade Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts to come out here. They're going to lead us in our pledge to the flag.
ships, aircraft carriers, and submarines. It also protects the right of the United States to move freely on the ocean. <laughs> with a big round of applause. You know, I enjoy this day for many reasons, but one of my most favorite things about this day isn't so much the speaking or the singing, it's watching the audience and our guests singing those songs along with our kids. And so you may have not realized you were doing it, but I saw a lot of toe tapping, on or off beat, I won't judge. 
I saw some singing, and there was a lot of pride and a lot of honor in those songs. And so I'm glad that you're able to share that with us today. I'm glad that we're able to teach this generation of students these songs and the meaning behind those songs and the great things that uh, go along with each of our armed services. So thank you very much. So at this time, what I'd like to do, we've got our honored uh, veterans that are here, but I recognize that we also have some veterans here in the audience. So if we could please just have one more time, if my veterans could please stand. Any veterans that are here or veterans that are here in the audience, if you could please stand and we give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for your service. At this time, I'd like to recognize and to welcome to the microphone uh, our distinguished guest of the day. He is retired Lieutenant Colonel from the United States Air Force, Mr. David Hinks. this morning, I asked him one thing. Would it be okay if you all yell and get loud? And he said, absolutely. So we'll be doing a little bit of that for the parents and veterans are here. Sorry about it. Our ears are going to hurt. My name is David Hanks, a retirement lieutenant colonel, United States Air Force. You can tell that I'm a lieutenant colonel by the rank that's on my collar right here. It's kind of hard to see. It's blue. This is a, this is a, a camouflage uniform called a battle dress uniform. On my hat, it's a silver, silver oak leaf. If I was in the Army or the Marine Corps, we would still say the same thing with Lieutenant Colonel. The Navy and the Coast Guard would still have the same sort of leaf, but we would be called a commander. So it's all the same rank there. I'm a veteran. Some people think that a veteran is someone, you're not really called a veteran until you actually retire from the armed services. That is not true. Anyone who raised their right hand, took an oath of office, and promised, among other things, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and wore a uniform for one minute, one hour, one day, as a veteran. We have a number of them, of them here today. Acronyms. You might know what an acronym is. Big word. Shout out from the very back there. What's an acronym? That's exactly it. The first letter of a few words put together. How about the acronym USA? What does USA stand for? Anybody back here? USA. United States of America. Today, this also, also stands for United States Army. United States Army. How about USN? USN. From the back, yell it out. United States Navy. How about USMC? Yes, ma'am, in the back. In the back, how about you? <coughs> exactly, United States Marine Corps. How about USCG? USCG. From the back, yell it out. United States Coast Guard, how about USAF? USAF, in the back here. Yes. USAF. We're talking about the military services. You got it? Yes, sir. United States Air Force, great job. One other acronym that I want to talk to you about today is HUA. H U A. HUA. It's a word that we use sometimes in the military. We don't have time to say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, I understood what you said. I got it, and I'm going to do it. The H is for heard, the U is for understand, and the A is for accept. Hula. Okay? So on three, really loud, yell hula. One, two, three. Hula! You've got to be able to really, it's like, it's like your gut is exploding. So everybody, go ahead and stand up. Stand up. On the count of three, hula. One, two, three. Hula! Right, go ahead and have a seat now. What we're 
we're going to do now, remember that a few times today, we're going to do that. Let's talk about some military commands. The first command is a command of coming to attention. On the parade ground, you would hear something like, attention, cut. When you come to attention, your hands will be at your side. You were standing perfectly straight, your chest is out, your gut is in. You're looking at something straight across from you, and you're not smiling. As hard as it is, don't smile when you come to attention. Don't lock your legs back like this, because you can cut off circulation, <coughs> and you can faint, OK? That's the first command. The second command is to present arms. Sounds like, present arms. You salute. Everybody hold your hand down. Your longest, and always with your right hand. And your hand is not turned out like this. It's turned in towards your face. Your arm is parallel with the ground. You take your longest finger. If you're wearing glasses, you touch the tip of your glasses. Otherwise, you touch the tip of your right eyebrow. That looks really good. Remember, your hand is turned in towards your face. Now, the last command is order arms. Sounds like order arms. And you're right, you drop your salute. Okay? Let's have a kindergarten. We've got kindergarten through fifth grade here, right, Mr. Faust? Kindergarten and first graders. On the count of three, I want you to yell really loud, attention. And students, when they yell attention, everybody stands up and comes to attention really quiet. Kindergartens and first graders, where are you? Raise your hands. All right, on the count of three, really loud, yell attention. One, two, one, two, three. Stand up, come to attention. No, we're not saluting yet. You're standing straight up, you're looking out, you're not smiling as hard as it is. Don't smile, you're at attention. Okay, second and third graders, you're going to give the command to salute, which is present arms. And everybody, when they give that command, you're going to raise your right hand. Don't knock the person over next to you, but raise your right hand and salute. Second and third graders on three, present arms. One, two, three. Be saluting. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fourth and fifth graders, really loud. You're going to give the command to order arms on three. One, two, three. Great job. Okay, go ahead and sit down. You heard about this a couple minutes ago. The 11th month, the 11th day, the 11th hour. Somebody back here read, November is the 11th month, the 11th day, and 11 a.m., the 11th hour, the 11th hour, 1918. What happened? What happened? November the 11th, 11 a.m., 1918. What happened? Yes, sir, in the back. Very back. World War I ended. Peace was declared. The problem is back then, because radio had just been invented about 20 years ago, communication was really slow. The way the communication, that, that war got around is men would either run or else ride on horses different places in the battlefield to let them, each other know that we're at peace, the war has ended. Unfortunately, in the time it took to do that, we estimate that somewhere between 3,600 and 4,000 people lost their lives in, in that time. And it's sad. Uh, these days that wouldn't happen with cell phones or satellite communications. Something more like that happens, happens right, right away, but it did not back then. One quick story that will bring us to an end. When I was in, when I was 29 years old, I uh, was a captain in the United States Air Force. And 29 seems really old to you all, but it will happen pretty quickly. And I was 29 years old, and my mother got a call from Mrs. Moore. Mrs. Moore was my fourth grade teacher. Remember, I was 29 years old, so, so a lady who I had not seen for 20 years got a call. My mom got a call from her. Mrs. Moore just been visited by someone from the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. It was a private investigator. That investigator was doing was asking questions. I was up for something called a, a top secret clearance so I could get a special position in the Air Force to do some pretty cool stuff. And what they do is the investigators would go back and talk to people that I had worked with, that I had lived with. We had no idea that they would go all the way back and talk to my fourth grade teacher. 
They were asking Mrs. Moore questions like, did David have integrity? Did I do the right things even when nobody is looking? Did I cheat on my test? Did I get into fights? Was I doing, even though nobody was looking, was I still doing the right thing? And you may think, well, okay, what does that have to do with? And, I, and I'm just letting you know that if you think that, well, I don't have to really worry about keeping my integrity now and being good right now. I can wait till I'm in high school because that's when it really counts. You're wrong. And if you think that these teachers won't remember you in 20 years, teachers are some of the smartest people in the world. I'm married to one. I know that. And they will remember you. If you take a look at your teachers now and quietly, just think about what they will look like 20 years from now. All right, I said quietly. Now just think about that. Their hair may look a little bit different. They may be wearing some different clothes. But they will remember you. They will remember the good things. And they will remember the bad things. Okay? And think of put yourself in that position of meeting them 20 years from now. Or them getting a call from someone asking, what, were, what, was, what, was he, what were you like when you were in the kindergarten or second grade or third grade? Keep your integrity a little bit. It will make a difference. All right. Last thing we'll do is we're going to have everybody come to attention. Attention. HUD! And now what we're going to do is I'm going to call out the names of the services in order, and then I'm going to count to three after we have. We'll go ahead and salute and do that here in just a minute. Call out the names of the services and all three, one big hula for each name of the services. All right? Present callers. United States Army. One, two, three. United States Navy. One, two, three. United States Marine Corps. One, one, two, three. United States Coast Guard. One, two, three. And United States Air Force. One, two, three. Great job. Everybody, happy Veterans Day on three, really loud. One, two, three. Great job, Luke Elementary. Take your seats. Boys and girls, if we give one more big round of applause to the attorney, Lieutenant Carol David We are recording our program uh, where we have a poem that we're doing and then we'll do a closing song by our second grade uh, students. So if you please get their attention.
All right, boys and girls, guests, that concludes our program. But before we leave today, I'd like to give a big round of applause to our music teacher, Mr. David Rockwell. Our seventh grade teacher, Ms. Amanda Reynolds, Ms. Sherry Simple, Ms. Michelle Lamantia. They put a lot of time and effort and energy to put this program together. And finally, I'm going to give one last round of applause to all our veterans who are here today. Thank you very much.